welcome back to another episode of the Roblox Studio Tutorials. In this video, I'll show you how I made a custom dialogue system in Roblox Studio that has an auto button, next, and skip button so that if you don't want to wait for the dialogue to finish, it will automatically go to the next dialogue line. If you don't want to watch the full tutorial, the link to this will be in the description below free of charge. First off, you're going to want to head into Roblox Studio and we're going to create a new GUI and start a GUI and we're going to name this dialogue. And within this dialogue, we're going to have a canvas group and we're going to call this screen. I don't use canvas groups that much, but I want to start experimenting with them more. That's why I have this here. And we're going to create a, um, a new configuration. And this just holds a whole bunch of like values, like number values and such, which is what we're going to use it for. And we're going to go back into the canvas group screen and we're going to resize it to the full screen. And we're going to set up all of the frames and the buttons and all of the text labels that are going to be in this dialogue. Okay, I've done that. And as you see, we have all these little boxes that are on the screen. At the far left, we have this avatar box, which is where the viewport of the avatar or the character that's currently speaking will be at. In this middle area, in this middle region at the top, we have a name label, which is going to hold the speaker's name pretty much and the message is going to be typed out on this little message box here and at the far right at the top we have this choices box which will hold all the choices that you can answer to the question with and at the bottom we have this controls box which will be which will say like which buttons you have to click to do which thing so on and so forth now speaking of viewports in the avatar let's go ahead and go into replicated storage and create a new folder call this viewports and this is where we're gonna hold all the players' viewports and all the NPCs that are in the games. So let's go ahead and create a new script and server script service, call this create character viewports. And if we head into the script and delete this hello world, because we're not gonna need it. And within this script, we're gonna we're gonna create some variables that we're gonna need. And so here are the variables that we're gonna need: replicated storage, players, modules folder, and a character viewports. Now the modules folder we have yet to do. In this characters viewports folder, we have yet to do also. So we need to create these two things before we proceed. So let's back out of this script, head into replicated storage, go into modules, or not modules, create a new folder, name this modules. And within this module, we're gonna create a new module script. We're gonna call this dialogue. And this module script, we're gonna create a new module script. I'm gonna call this the create viewports and go into this create viewports one. All right, so within this module script, we're gonna have the dialogue config, which is gonna be another module that we're gonna create in a second. And we're gonna have this create new character viewport script here, which is pretty much, we're creating a new viewport frame. We're creating a new camera for that viewport frame. We're setting the camera in front of the player and we're creating a new world model and we're cloning the character and we're putting that character in the new world model. And we're removing all the unnecessary parts from said character clone. Now, if we go back up and head back to this dialogue config script, so let's create that real quick. Let's head into the dialogue module, create a new module script. I'm gonna call this dialogue config. And within this module, we're gonna get rid of these. All right, so here you see are a lot of variables that will be used within the game. You can change if you want dialogue cutscenes, you can change the Google player placeholder, you can change the dialogue choices list padding, but we'll get to all of these variables in their individual use cases later on. Just remember to put this module script in because we will need it. So let's get out of all of these scripts that we just made. Let's go back into this create character viewports. All right, I've finished coding up the script. I've added a little loop here, which loops through the workspace and gets all of the children in the workspace and checks if that child is a character which has a dialogue NPC bool value in it. If it does, then we actually create a viewport for that character. And this just does it for the players also. I also forgot to add the viewports added here. So, so let's hop out of the script yet to have this dialogue module script coded up. So let's do that. So we have a whole bunch of child modules like what we added earlier. We also have these four other module scripts that we have to add. And now we want to add this UIs folder and we're going to add this remotes folder. So let's go to replicated storage add a new folder, call this remotes, and go again, add a new folder, and call this UIs. Let's go ahead and add in all of these child modules that we would need. So first, let's start off with player controller. It's gonna handle functions regarding the player, and so on and so forth. And let's create another child module that we would need. All right, I finished coding up, and this is by far probably one of the most simpler ones that when we call this module script, we'll just immediately play the sound function. All we have left is the dialogue database and the twin controller. But before we do that, 
Let's go ahead and finish up this dialogue module script functionality. I finished editing all the functions and let's go by them one by one. And uh, let me tell you how they work. So first, let's start off with the module functions down here. Let's start off with the start dialogue. So on the client, the player is going to require this module script and call this function. And this is going to start the whole process off. We're going to fetch the player, going to fetch the dialogue GUI that we made earlier, and we're going to load the dialogue data in. We see that all we do here is we fetch the player again and we load in all the variables and start playing the dialogue. Looks quite complex, but it's not really complex. What this is pretty much doing is just going through the dialogue database, fetching the next line and checking if it's a question or not. And if it is, then we'd show dialogue choices. If it's not, we go to the next dialogue. Now that we are talking about this, it's a good time for us to make the dialogue database actual script. So our actual module script. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's hop out of the script, go back into the module script dialogue. And under that, we're going to create a new module script. I'm going to call this dialogue database. I can't spell. Now within this script, we're going to hard code the lines for the dialogue. So here we have the dialogue sequence that was in the intro of this video. We're hard coding the dialogue into a module script. And this thing can get pretty long, pretty quick. So that's why we have this in its own individual module script so we can keep everything organized now let's move out of this dialogue database and back into the dialogue module script in this dialogue module script alongside these functions we also need the tween controller all right in this tween controller script i've just finished editing all the code pretty much in this script we're going to have multiple functions here that are going to deal with the tweening and deal with the animating of the dialogue i mean they're self-explanatory but display dialogue it animates all the dialogue view in and high dialogue view. I mean, high dialogue view just hides the screen, hides the canvas group. And this display dialogue choice animates the choice in. And this reset dialogue view is just resetting the whole dialogue view. So then, so then later on, we can just display dialogue again. So that's pretty much what this is doing. A nice little loop here. So hopefully that made sense. Let's hop back into this dialogue module script. That will be all the, the child module scripts that we have in this dialogue module script. I'm going to create a new script in the script service. I'm going to call this dialogue choices handler. Now let's go ahead and go into the script and remove this hello world, uh, uh, hello world, because we don't need it. Now in this script, we'll have two remotes. I'm going to have them um, dialogue line red and choice answered. So before we continue, let's go ahead and hop out of this script back into tutorials. And let's go into the remotes folder and let's create those two remote events that we just said. Make sure these are spelled correctly because they will not work if you spell them wrong. Oh, I didn't spell that right. So we're going to go to starter player scripts. I'm going to create a new script. I'm going to call this dialogue, if I know how to spell, controller. Now let's uh, pull this up real quick. Now in this dialogue controller, we're just referencing the some services, the player, the player, and the dialogue GUI, and all of its frames and such, and the modules folder, the dialogue, and the dialogue config. Down here, we have some functions, the auto key press and the next key press. So within that dialogue config module script we have these auto dialogue keys and these next skip close dialogue keys just pretty much is detecting when these keys are pressed and when these keys are pressed we we call the related function this pretty much is doing is it's checking if in dialogue is actually running right now and we're checking if the player can skip dialogue and if next dialogue that value is true and the auto dialogue is false then we play the next dialogue line oops notification sorry about that so yeah, that's what that's doing. And the auto key press function, we're just, we're checking if the active dialogue is currently running. And then this is checking if the dialogue automatic option is available. And this just is a toggle between on and off. And that's a little debounce uh, if then statement here. And that's what this dialogue controller script is doing. Within this dialogue controller script, we're gonna have three other local scripts. And let's get those coded up. So the first script that we'll have under this dialogue controller script is the choices handler, which will handle all of the choices that pop up in that choices box. And on this mouse button click, we check if a choice is currently selected. And if a choice is not selected, then we select a new choice. And we just call that dialogue choice selective function. Under the choices handler script in dialogue controller, we have a controls handler, which just handles the control images. So if the device is on computer, we set the images the next key image to a left mouse button click icon and the auto key button to a middle mouse button icon 
and so on so forth for gamepad touch and all that now that we're out of the script we can go below it and see this remote handler which is just the on client events that when we call those remote events from the server to the clients that we're now picking those up on the client we're now receiving them on the client we see this if the dialogue id equals greeting and the line index equals three then we print the player read fun fact so let's go to the dialogue database if we go to dialogue ID sequence greeting and we go to line three, which is this one, we see that the fun fact is here. So yeah, we're just checking that here. And if it is determined to be true, then we just say print player red fun fact. I know I think I explained that quite confusingly, but hope you, hopefully you got it. Now, if we head out of this and close all of these scripts, let's go ahead and get remove all of these like boxes because we don't need them anymore. Go ahead and make sure that you've added in all the values under the dialog values and actually properly name these module scripts in this folder because I had to rename this one and had to rename this one because of some spelling errors I did. Make sure they look like this and they are the right name because if they are not, then things will not work properly and you'll get errors in the output and make sure all these values are in there. The active dialog, auto dialog, current prompt, line index, next dialog, question acts, skipping, skip typing and typing and create a choice button. We could have did this earlier, but kind of forgot to talk about that. So I'm saying it now. But instead of keeping this button here, we're gonna have this button stay in the UIs folder so we can just easily clone this and use it as we need. And also lastly, I forgot to mention down here in sound service, I have some sound effects that are with this system. And I forgot to mention that earlier. So make sure to have all of these sound effects in the game. So all the functionality is in place. We've coded up all of the dialogue in the dialogue controllers and the dialogue handlers. Now all we need to do is create an NPC to talk to and create a dialogue sequence in the dialogue database. Now we have an NPC and we have this dialogue NPC bool value, which when it's set to equal true, this is how the game will know that this is a NPC that can be spoken to with the dialogue system. In this dialogue prompt, we're going to have the name of the dialogue sequence here. Pretty much if we head back to modules and go into the dialogue database, this name right here has to be the same as this action text and this dialogue prompt. If not, then it won't work. I'm going to create a new dialogue cutscene real quick and we'll both test it out together. All right, so I've added in the dialogue system, or the dialogue sequence into the game. So let's go ahead and play it and uh, let's see. Well, we made if you want to see how i made that camera cutscene system it was from a previous project of mine so if you're interested about that go ahead and check it out on that video i'll leave a link to it in the description or put a card up on the top right of the screen whatever whatever i decide to do 